Hi everyone, I want to talk today about Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways version 4, fondly known as the multilingual release. I want to start by going through uh, how multilingual release is enabled or, or not enabled in your environment, and then I'll talk through some new uh, features that are, are there and how to implement multilingual. So let's start by uh, quickly taking a look at our site settings. So we have the my in in my environment, my learning pathways uh, main site, and this main site was created by provi the provisioning service or the lookbook service. Um, and the lookbook service provisions a site uh, that is default language is set to English. And if that's not something that you need or that you, you uh, or want, excuse me, you want uh, your site default language to be in some other language that the multilingual uh, release supports, then you need to manually create that site collection and then apply learning pathways on top of it. Um, but in this case, I used the lookbook provisioning. Um, and so in the language settings, by default, it's going to enable the new out-of-the-box multilingual pages feature uh, for uh, communication sites. And so you can see here that English is my default language for the site and that all the other languages that Learning Pathways supports has been enabled here. Um, and so the site will support all those languages. If I didn't need all of these languages, I could just remove the ones that I don't want. Um, and that does improve performance a little bit because there is some overhead to having to merge all these various languages into uh, your custom playlist. So uh, by removing languages that you're not going to use, that certainly helps performance a little bit uh, from the admin uh, center part of this. Uh, all of this data still uh, is cached so if the uh, web parts themselves will be uh, as speedy as always regardless of how many languages you have if you do not need multilingual or in the sense that uh, you have whatever site you have and you only need that language you can uh, disable this you don't even have to have this on if your default site is like german or french um, and you can just create the French site or the German site or whatever uh, of these languages that you need as your default language and don't enable multilingual and it'll work just fine now. So that, that is uh, an enhancement that we made. So once you enable uh, your language uh, multilingual feature and turn it on, uh, then, and you've updated the web part following the update instructions on our GitHub repo, then you come to the custom learning admin page. That needs to be your first stop once you updated the, uh, sh sh uh, the uh, SPPKG package into your tenant app catalog. The first stop you need to make is the admin page. And assuming that you were on a previous version and doing an upgrade, you're going to see this upgrade um, screen. You can also force it by adding a query string parameter uh, to the end of the admin page, force update equals v, and then whatever version you're coming from. So in this case, like version 3, or if you were coming from version 2 uh, directly to version 4, you can put that on there and force the re-update, which is handy if you have an error or there's some problem and you need to re-upgrade after the fact. If this is a fresh install for you, you're not gonna see this page, but I just wanted to point out that we have this new upgrade experience. It can be run over and over again. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything to, to run it multiple times. So when you get to this page, you'd hit the start button, uh, the upgrade runs, it gives you a little log of everything that was done and um, mentions that it's all complete. So now you just need to close that and it comes back and reloads the Learning Pathways site. From a multilingual perspective, we now then have the ability to create our own custom subcategories and playlists like we always did, but now we'll be able to create translations for those things that our end users see about the metadata for those playlists. So let's start with adding a subcategory, and then we'll also then show a new feature. So if I go and add a new subcategory, and let's say I wanted to call this test subcategory, I can then add the translations for the word test because that's my title in all of the other languages that I support. Now I don't speak, I, you know, I am, I'm not very multilingual myself unless we count computer languages. Um, so I don't know all the translations, but you know, you can see that you can 
um, you know, ch add each one of these languages so that you can support adding all the translations that you need. So once you do that, you can just save it and um, and that gives you all the languages. The other thing that we now have is the ability to customize the image that goes with um, a subcategory. So this was a, a re often requested feature. Um, there was sort of a hacky way to do it, but now we have an image picker. So we can play, uh, excuse me, pick, choose image. It'll give us a list of recent images. This is very similar to the out of the box experience. And so I can just pick an image that works for me and click open and that becomes the new image for our category. So um, that's how we add a new category and that's how we add it, the multilingual version. So similarly with playlists, we have the ability to do the same thing. So if I have a new test playlist um, with a test description, uh, I don't have to assign it to a technology. It's in this category getting started. I do also have the ability to customize the image um, and I do not, um, and I have that image picker instead of having to have the URL. Um, and so once I save, you know, I can save this. Um, and that's my, uh, my custom playlist. However, I also have the ability to add the translation. So again, if we pick German, you'll note that it copied the English um, title and description, but it allows us to change those things because those are the things um, that we need to translate because they're customized. The rest of these things have translations already in the manifest for Microsoft. Since they're not customizable, um, we don't need to have translations. And as well, if you had picked a custom subcategory, we've already defined the translations for those. So we don't need to, to pick the translated version. So we're just going to be changing the things that matter based on, on the uh, languages that were um, the, the, customizations that we need to make for the playlist. And then similarly, if we add a new asset, we're going to have a user interface for creating a, a custom uh, uh, translation of the title for each one of our assets, as well as a URL. Now, so let me sort of speak to that. So if I have a new test um, asset and I say create an asset page, keep in mind that I said we're, um, we're we're leveraging the power of the out of the box multilingual feature. So the out of the box multilingual feature will automatically redirect um, pages. So now that we have this test page, if I go and open a new tab over here, we can, uh, you know, customize this page, but also create a translation of it. So we only really need this URL for our translations. So let me um, show you by adding another translation that I can now translate the title if I want to. I also have the ability to change the URL if I need to, but if it's a SharePoint page, um, you don't really need to change this URL because the redirector from the out of the box feature is gonna do the redirect for you. But you can if you want to, if you wanna force exactly which um, file that should be opened. You can do that, but the redirector is going to handle it for you. So you don't really need to do that. So um, that is how to set up all of the multilingual features. Uh, one other final feature that I wanted to kind of show here in the admins uh, area, excuse me, is the uh, about web part feature that gives us details of the installation of our Learning Pathways site. And so this can help you with support and just sort of understanding uh, what your setup is and what your current configuration is instead of having to run PowerShell to get some of those details. So that's another good support tool that's um, in there that I just wanted to point out. In addition, we've added a much requested feature of a custom sort. To, so to make this the most flexible solution that we could, we decided to uh, make the customization happen on the Learning Pathways web part and not in the admin center. And this way, a customization of sorting stays with the implementation of the web part and not a static resorting for the entire uh, product everywhere. And I think this offers more flexibility as well as reduces some of the risk associated with applying a custom sort 
um, in the admin center. So if you edit the Learning Pathways web part, uh, the feature is only available if you filter to a particular product. So we're going to, in this case, you can um, do a custom sort on a category or a subcategory. Um, subcategories are lists of playlists and categories are lists of subcategories. So let's pick category in this case and I'll say I want to do the products list. And when we uh, do this filtering, we'll get the customized sort option. So all we have to do is turn that on and we'll hit apply. And then this panel can be closed because we don't need it anymore. Um, but now you'll notice when we hover over these particular products in the list, they have a little grabber icon, which indicates that they can be uh, grabbed and moved. So now if I grab this icon and move it around, um, I'm applying a different sorting for this page. And so that can be pretty pretty useful to get a, a, a sort that is more appropriate for the implementation. Uh, and then as if we save this draft, we now have a custom sort for these uh, for these items. And you can apply multiple web parts to a page and sort each one of those individually. So this offers a lot of flexibility. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope these uh, new updates are going to be useful for you. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks.